Hey everyone, this is Vegetarian Zombie and I want to welcome you back to my Intro to Twine series. In this episode, I'm going to I'm going to be covering local storage. So, what is local storage and why does it really matter to you? Well, local storage is something that's really important for you to understand because if you don't understand it, ultimately it's going to bite you in a really bad way. Now, in previous episodes, I've talked about local storage, and I, I briefly mentioned it. But in this one, I thought I might as well go into a little more depth about what it is and exactly what it means when working with Twine and how you can come up with some strategies and, and how to work around local storage so that you ultimately don't lose any of your work. And then in the next episode, you know, we'll go, come back to our normal Twine. Well, I'll go back into the regular tutorials and so forth about some of the more Twine features and coding and so forth. So let's just dive into it now. So what is local storage? Well, local storage, in fact, I have it over here. It is actually something from that was from HTML5. Now, HTML is a markup language, and it's basically what is renders its the structure of a web page. So every time you go to a web page, HTML is delivered to your browser, your browser parses it, and voila, you have a web page. Well, HTML specifies something known as local storage. And local storage, you can see down here, it's like cookies. Now, in cookies, basically the way cookies work is cookies, every time you go to a website that has that uses cookies, you send a small amount of data that send that's saved on your computer to a server, which they then parse, and then it will then identify who you are. And it's really useful for sites like Amazon and so forth. Well, local storage is like cookies, except there's a lot more data and it's saved on your computer instead. And you can see here, there's a whole lot of browser support, it has Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari, and Opera. And the question is, why would you want to use local storage? Well, this is a great way to cache information. Let's say there's a really expensive query, and by expensive, I mean it takes a long time to generate about, say, certain stocks or maybe some certain data set that you're interested in. Well, instead of r running that query every time you go to the site, the site may run that query once and then save that data in your browser's local storage. And then the next time you go to that site, you can then fetch that data back and it's just instantaneous. Other times is in like Twine, Twine uses local storage to save your stories. So when you save your story, it's being saved on your browser. So when we come in here and you can see we're on twinery.org and we're using it online, when we create a new story and we save it, it's not being saved on Twine servers it's being saved in your own browser. So here's my story I worked on a long time ago called Creepy. And if we edit it, this, and this was all saved in my browser's local storage. So this is a good thing. Local storage lasts for a long time. So what's the big deal? Why am I doing a video on local storage when it, it seems to work out well? Well, here's the problem. Local storage, for one thing, has limits. There's a certain size that you can use, and that in itself is not a problem. The problem is, is how some browsers handle local storage. They basically handle it like a cache. So have you ever had any problems with your computer? Say you're visiting a website, you couldn't log in for whatever reason, you contacted support and they say, well, clear your cookies and clear all your cache and then try again. Well, if you did that in some browsers, you would delete your local storage. So what does that mean? You will delete your stories. So that is a bad thing. So relying on local storage gives you the benefit of saving your story and being really nice, really easy to use, but also makes your stories very fragile. So that's one reason to keep in mind. The next thing to understand about local storage is it applies to each individual browser. So when I'm here in Safari and I've created the story called Creepy and I'm saving it to Safari's local storage, well, if I go to my another browser, I go to Chrome and here I am at Twinery again. And if I, you can see I have three different stories and you can see this one 
is different. This version of creepy is different from this version of creepy. This version, if we come back home, I worked on February 1st. In this version of creepy, I worked on February 16th. And you can see, if we open this up, I wonder if these are any different from each different from each other. No, they, they look relatively the same. But the thing to keep in mind is that these are two different copies of the same story. So if you're like me who works with multiple browsers, local storage is going to get in your way. So one thing, just say for instance, you're working on your story from home and you make some changes and so forth and you save it, but then you wanna make some changes at work. Well, when you go to your work computer, you won't be able to access that story even though you're accessing it through twinery.org because that's all working on your local storage. So what I always suggest is, I'll switch over to Chrome here, whenever you're working on your story, you should not rely on local storage. You should consider it as a, shall we say, a nice to have, but you should not rely on it. So basically, when you're working on your story, and here's this version of cold storage, I have another version, which I even worked on last night, and you can see this is last edited on February 20th. I worked on another computer. So when you're done, I always suggest you save to you publish to file, always. Once you do that, you'll get this desktop here, and you can just save like so. And then, what, then when you're done, you can come back here, and next time you come into work in Twine, I suggest you delete that story and load up from your file. And you can come here to the import from file, choose from file, and you can choose cold storage like that, and it will reparse your story, and then you'll have access to it. And you can see it was last edited on March 19th, which was today. Again, this is an older version of the story. And then what you can do is save this story into a Dropbox folder or some, some cloud-enabled folder that, that will then capture that file and upload it into a place that you could access it from another location or another device and so forth. Now, before I end off this really short uh, tutorial, I just also would like to talk about a bug that is in Safari. I am primarily Mac-based, as you can tell, and I use Safari for a lot of a lot of things. It's not my primary browser, but it's very close. Well, Twine has a big problem in it, and it may have this in other browsers, and I wanted to show you how to get around this problem. If I go to Creepy here, what I can do here is, say I'm following my best practices. I want to, let's actually get out of Creepy. Let's import the cold storage again. So we'll go to my desktop. We'll go to cold storage. And you can see we imported the story and let's say we made some changes and so forth. Okay, great. Now I wanna publish this back out. Now you can see when I hit publish to file, I get this. This is a bug in Twine and I think they know about this. But what this does is it leaves us in a really, really bad state. Because if you then go and you save this, file save as, and we'll say, we'll call this cold storage two Let's see what happens. So we'll come back here. Now we'll import this again. Let's import cold storage too. And you can see, sorry, no stories could be found in this file. Okay, this is bad news. This, is, this means our story is now locked up in the local storage and we can't access it unless we manually copy and paste all these passages and so forth and that is prone to bugs and prone to error. So in a sense, your story is held captive. So how do we get around this problem? And again, this is only on Safari so far on Yosemite. I don't know if there are, this is happening to other browsers, but if it is, this is how you can solve the problem. What I want you to do is open up your text browser or your text editor of choice. And, and on Mac, I'm using Text Wrangler. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna open that file I saved. So let's open this desktop here. We're gonna open, actually, we're gonna open everything. Let me see, why isn't this opening here? There we go. So we opened up cold storage too, and you can see we got a lot of stuff here. We got, actually this looks like, okay, let me go back. 
this obviously is not working the way I intended it. Let's go to my desktop and we're gonna call this .html. Yes, we'll use that. Let's open this up again. Cold storage two. Nope, okay. Let's go back here and what I'll do, we'll open up cold storage and it will publish this out. So when you publish out the file, you're gonna see something that looks exactly like this. And this is going to be, you're not gonna know what to do. And again, you can save it like I saved it before, but the way you can salvage your story is you can come back up here and you're gonna to have to do a little copying and pasting. So you can start here where it says TW story. So you wanna take this and you wanna copy this all the way down to let's see right here tw story data so right before it stops but you'll see the script title twine engine code you don't want any of that stuff this is all the code that makes your story run you don't need to know about any of this stuff as you can see it's all mumble jumble you just want to start up here tw story and then you can see we have a tw story data and we go all the way down here and you want to close off at tw story data I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back to my text editor and let's just close this. And we will put a new. We'll paste that here. And let's see. I'll move this over here. So we have all this. This looks right. Okay, great. Let's save this. And we'll call this cold storage three. Now I'm gonna switch back to Twine again. We're gonna go back here, and now I'm gonna delete my story. I'm gonna delete cold storage, and now we're gonna import it like so. And this time you can see one story was imported. So that is how we can save and salvage our stories in case you run into that bug. So that's, I, I when I first started using Twine, I ran right into that, and my, First, and actually it still stays, in my, my recommendation still stands, don't use Safari when working with Twine until they fix this bug. Otherwise, each time you save off and you're done with working on your story for that session, you're gonna have to do exactly what I did so that you don't rely on local storage. And finally, I just wanna close off with this on this, this video saying is I'm gonna be, like I said, I'm gonna be covering some other aspects of Twine and once I do, do that, I'll be jumping into some other other avenues of Twine to the different story formats and so forth. But I've been noticing I've been getting a lot of views on this series and a lot of people have contacted me and they've been really enjoying this. And I'm really glad to hear this is helping a lot of people. And I want to put this out there that if you're using this series I put together to make your own Twine stories, feel free to send me a link to your story or send me your story. And what I can do is ultimately put a compilation video together of all the Twine stories that were made from, from as a result of this video series. And then I can just do a quick review of each story so you can see what other Twine developers are doing as well. So again, I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope this was uh, useful for you. And I will catch you in the next episode.